picture this. You're playing your position in the infield and you have what seems like the easiest ground ball in the world hit to you. You start moving towards the ball, rolling at a perfect speed, and you can already picture the great play that you're going to make. You arrive at the ball, but before you know it, you see the ball rolling past you in the outfield. Have you ever had this happen? There are so many things that can cause you to miss a ground ball, but I would say that the biggest cause of simple errors is poor fielding mechanics. Today's Bullpen Bulletin is all about how to properly field a ground ball. I'm giving you five simple steps to remember so you never have to see the ball roll past you again. Hey team, it's Coach Hart with Building Better Baseball, the best place for baseball education. Thanks for tuning in today. And really quick, I'd like to say that this channel is specifically for youth baseball players and coaches. My weekly videos are meant to help you improve in every aspect of baseball. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And make sure you don't miss my free guides that I'm giving away at the end of the video as my gift to you for stopping by. Now, let's make sure that we never miss another ground ball. Number one is know the situation. For the rest of your baseball career, until you play your very last game, the most important thing that you will ever do on a baseball field is know the situation. Being able to field the ball is great, but it doesn't mean anything if you don't know where you're going with the ball. That's the whole reason you field the ball in the first place, right? It's to make outs for your team. That's like having a car with no wheels. You could have the best car in the entire world, but if it doesn't have any wheels, it can't go anywhere. Same thing with baseball. You could be the best fielder in the entire world, but if you don't know where you're going with the ball, the ball can't go anywhere after you field it. Before every single pitch, you should be asking yourself three quick questions. How many outs are there? Where are the base runners, if there are any? And what am I doing with the ball if it's hit to me? Make sure when you're answering that third question, you're thinking about both a ground ball and a fly ball or line drive that you catch. These three questions should be ingrained in your brain, and asking these questions before every single pitch should become a habit. Lastly, if you don't know an answer, ask. Ask your teammates, ask your coach, the umpire, anybody. People forget the situation all the time in baseball. You're not the first one or the last one that'll ever do it. So don't feel bad or embarrassed about asking. I'd rather you ask and be sure than to not ask and to make a mistake. Number two is the pre-step. Now that we know the situation, we can prepare to field the ball. I call this your pre-step. Your pre-step is going to get your body moving as the pitcher pitches the ball and get you on your toes and ready to field as the hitter is hitting the ball. Your pre-step is your preparation to field. You want your body moving as the pitcher is pitching because you want to create momentum towards the ball rather than starting from nothing when the ball is hit. You want to be on your toes because your body is more agile and can react quicker than if you are back on your heels. The pre-step should be on every single pitch. You never want to be caught back on your heels with no momentum as the ball is hit to you. The pre-step is a series of three movements. It's a step, a step, and a hop. It doesn't matter which foot you start with, but you step with one foot, and then you step with the other foot, and then you hop and land on both of your toes in your ready to field position. You want to time your landing so that as you are landing, that's the same time as the hitter is hitting the ball. So it looks like this. If I'm ready to field, I'm doing my pre-step, I'm here, I'm doing my step, step, hop. Just like that. And as I'm landing, that's the same time as the hitter is hitting the ball. Also, when I do my pre-step, I always like to have my glove out and ready to go, but you can do whatever you want that's comfortable for you with your glove. Doing this pre-step on every single pitch will help make sure that you're ready to field any ball in any area of the field. Number three is create an angle to first base. Now that you just pre-stepped, you're ready to field the ball that was just hit to you. The number one priority is to always field the ball first, no matter where it is or no matter what position your body is in when you field it. Your second priority should be to get an angle and create an angle towards first base. And if you're throwing somewhere else, create an angle towards your target where you're throwing. To keep things simple for this video, our target's gonna be first base. There are a lot of coaches who teach a lot of different ways to do this, but overall, you want your body and your momentum going and pointing towards first base. First, with your momentum, you want to get around the ball and field the ball as you're moving towards first base. You don't want to go in a straight line to the ball and then have to sharply change directions towards first base. You want it to be a smooth motion where you're moving towards first as you're fielding the ball, and the whole entire fielding motion is just flowing towards first. So getting around the ball looks like this. If the ball is here, like that, 
and I'm going here and first base is over here, I would be charging the ball and I would be getting around it here, getting here and getting everything going towards first base as I'm fielding it. I don't want to come here, field it here, and then sharply change direction towards first base. I want to already create that before I field the ball. So I'm getting around it here like this, here, here, creating the angle towards first, and as I come through here, boom, I'm already flowing towards first base. That's exactly what I mean when I say create momentum towards first. And second, when I talk about the angle to first base, I'm talking about the angle of your body, specifically your shoulders and your hips. When you field the ball, you want your body to already be in a throwing position with your throwing shoulder pointing towards first base. If your body is not in that position when you feel the ball, use your feet to get you in that position as you're transitioning from fielding to throwing. So what does that look like? I'm right here and the ball is here. I'm getting around the ball here, here, here like this. I don't want to field it like this with my chest facing first. I want to field it like this with my glove shoulder already facing towards first. So I'm here like this. I'm getting around the ball here. I'm coming here, I'm creating the angle like this, right? So as I'm fielding the ball, my shoulder and my hips are all angled in a proper throwing position where all I have to do is go up here like this and throw like that. There's little movement there. I don't want a lot of movement when I'm doing this ground ball. So that's what I mean when I say create an angle with your shoulders and your hips towards first base. A bonus tip, you always wanna keep your feet moving throughout the entire motion. Never stop your feet because that will stop your momentum and your flow. When the ball is hit, get your feet moving towards the ball. And as you approach the ball and you need to slow yourself down, chop your feet. Chopping your feet allows you to slow yourself down and gain more control of your body, but it keeps your feet moving so that you can keep the flow and the momentum through the entire fielding motion. So what does that look like? You go here, if I'm all the way back here and the ball is there, I'm going to sprint, I'm going to run, 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 run. Once I get to the ball and I start approaching to the ball, I'm going to chop my feet, right? I'm going to get right here and I'm going to chop my feet. That allows me to gain control of my body and slow myself down, but it keeps my feet moving so I keep the momentum and the flow. So I'm here like this, I'm going to chop my feet and then here, boom, boom, all the way through. So chopping your feet allows you to keep your feet moving, but it also allows you to slow down and gain more control of your body. Number four is tripod position. So you've done your pre-step and you got your momentum and your angle going towards first base. Now we actually have to feel the ball. When you feel the ball, you wanna think of a tripod. And if you don't know what a tripod is, it's something that holds a camera or other devices, but specifically, it's something that has three legs. The three legs of your tripod position are your two legs and your glove. And your throwing hand, when you feel the ball, should always be on top, almost like an alligator's mouth, ready to secure the ball in your glove when you feel the ball. This tripod position helps you remember to feel the ball out in front of your body. And you wanna feel the ball out in front for a few reasons. The first one is it helps you keep your balance. Because when you feel the ball back with your glove in between your legs like this, that most likely means that you're back on your heels. And back on your heels means no balance. So from the side, it looks like this. If you're feeling like this, you're like almost falling back and you're back on your heels. And that means that you have no balance. It's very hard to balance that way. Number two, it keeps your momentum and flow going towards first because fielding the ball between your legs stops the momentum. So when you field it out in front, that helps you keep your momentum and your flow going towards first base. And when you stop at the ball and you field it in between your legs like this and you're back on your heels, that completely stops any momentum and flow going towards first. And when you field it, you have to stand up and you have to restart from zero everything and all the momentum that you built. You don't want to stop that momentum. So make sure you field it out in front in the tripod position because that makes it easier to keep the momentum and the flow. And the third reason is it helps keep your head and your eyes up. Keeping your eyes and your head up helps you easily pick up your target. When you field the ball and you're looking down here like this, you have to raise your head all the way up here and then try to find your target. If you field it out in front, your eyes are already here and it's very easy to see where you're going to throw it. It also allows you to see any bad hops that the ball is going to take so you can attack them before they eat you up. When you feel the ball back between your legs, it's almost impossible to see where the ball is going to hop. And that creates a very easy opportunity for the ball to go through your legs. Number five is set your feet and follow through. 
Now that you've got the ball in your glove, it's time to throw the runner out. After you've secured the ball, you want to funnel the ball in towards the center of your body, almost around your belly button area, and set your feet. As you're setting your feet, you're going into your throwing motion and you're throwing the ball to first base. And after I threw, I always like to take a couple steps towards first just to make sure I completely followed through with my throw. So what does that look like? I field the ball here and after I throw, I take a couple steps towards first just to make sure that I'm following all the way through. So what does it look like when you funnel the ball through? You get right here. So I'm right here, I pre-step, I get around, create that angle momentum. I'm in my tripod position right here, tripod position here, and I funnel the ball in as I shuffle and set my feet. I'm going into my throwing motion and I throw the ball and I follow through towards first. One more time. I'm here, I get around the ball, create that angle, momentum, everything, tripod position here, field the ball. As I'm going into my throwing motion, I'm funneling the ball towards the center of my body, going into my throwing motion, I throw and I follow through towards first. That's exactly what I mean when I say field the ball and funnel it in towards the body as you're setting your feet and throwing the ball. Before we go, I'd like to stress the point of setting your feet before you throw. I can't tell you how many times I've seen players make amazing plays in the field, but they didn't take time to set their feet and they did some sort of off balance throw and they completely missed the first baseman and the runner got to second base. The amazing fielding play doesn't get the out. The first baseman catching the ball gets the out. The amazing fielding play means nothing if the first baseman doesn't catch the ball. Make sure you have control of your body and you set your feet before you throw the ball. Use shuffle steps to gain control. Take one shuffle, or if you have time, even better yet, take two shuffles to get your feet and your body controlled before you throw. So what does that look like? You field the ball here, and as you hear, you take a shuffle just like that to set your feet, control your body, and make a good throw. And if you have time, if there's like a really slow runner, you can take two shuffles. I've seen people take two shuffles before. They field the ball here, and they go one, two, and then make sure they make a good throw. Because as I said, the amazing fielding play means nothing if the first baseman doesn't catch the ball. Let me know one thing you learned today about fielding a baseball. Did everything make sense? Are you ready to get out on the field and practice? I'd love to hear from you. And I have some free guides that I'd like to give you before we go that are down in the description. There's a free baseball equipment sizing guide that covers all the equipment that we use in baseball. But more importantly, it helps you find your perfect size for you. And there's also a free two-hour practice plan for coaches with two practice blueprints if you're looking for some help in organizing your practices for more efficiency. Grab yours before you go. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope this video showed you exactly how to properly field a ground ball and you're ready to take it out to the field and make every play. I'll see you next week for another edition of the Bullpen Bulletin.